Hello everyone, this is Brayden Nave. Welcome to The Youth Room, a podcast by UPCI Youth Ministries. This podcast will focus on topics relevant to youth and young adults. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on the third Tuesday of each month. All right, welcome everybody to back to the youth room. Excuse me. Um, once again, my name is Braden Nave, and I'm joined by our original host from the first episode, Kyle Lloyd. Um, as you can probably tell, this set is different than what we've uh, originally had. Um, well, I guess if you're just listening, you don't know, but uh, we're in a different spot. Um, and that is because we are currently trying to find a more permanent place for the Youth Room podcast um, for our video portion, just so it kind of looks a little bit better and uh, a little bit more inform- more informal than what we've been doing, So, uh, as noted by the sweatshirts. So, um, But yeah, so this episode is just going to basically be a uh, kind of meet the host type deal, and uh, then you know we'll kind of just tell some stories and and whatnot, but it's actually kind of interesting. Kyle and I uh, both grew up in Illinois, um, kind of in, I don't want to say different generations. You're not that much older than I am, but I feel like I'm <laughs> a lot older, especially <laughs> after telling me what you told me earlier. Yeah. Um, so we're both from Illinois. Uh, I am currently a student at Urshan uh, and works for Youth Ministries. Kyle uh, is also works for Youth Ministries, and he is a graduate of Urshan College. But um, so we're just going to basically be telling some stories and, uh, you know, telling our likes, dislikes, what we don't care about. And <laughs> I don't yeah. know, but, um, but me and Kyle, before the episode, we're kind of talking about a, uh, a video that he and a few other guys did at Illinois camp one year. And uh, they, they sang a song during service. And I think it was when Brother Bailey was youth president possibly or Jason Cox I think it was Jason Cox yeah I think um, that sounds right yeah and when Jason Cox was youth president and during service they uh got up and they started singing a song and uh Kyle what, what was that song about <laughs> so just a little backstory we uh me and the other fellow camp counselors that year we uh, <laughs> we decided we wanted to just write a song about camp and it was like the last day of camp and we we wrote a song as a tribute to just like a day in the life of a teen camper. Uh, and so basically the song is about uh, this guy that meets a girl and he, and he falls in love with her or whatever. And he finally works up the courage to ask her out to go like to the snack shop or whatever. Uh, the con- concession stand uh, on Thursday or Wednesday, he finally asks her to go to the concession stand and then, and then Friday they break up or whatever because, you know, it's camp and you're probably never going to see that person again. <laughs> yeah. So a- I'm going to try to roll that, that video in. So it was, it was, we didn't intend it to be a video because it was like cell phones were not really allowed on at camp. I don't think at the time. Then? I don't think so. And, it, and the cameras were terrible at that time because it was maybe 2009, maybe yeah. 2008, yeah. maybe even earlier. I don't remember. On Tuesday, I caught her right. I thought she was super fly. She plays ball like one of the guys. And I want to make her mine. I like her. I like her. I like her. On Wednesday we played cancer ball And Jeter Caesar made a bad call We ate a really nasty lunch But I gave her my fruit punch a kid ran, ran through the glass door, and now he's really sore. I wrote her name on a popsicle stick and threw it in the fire pit. I like her. I like her. I like her. I like her. But. 
Braden wasn't even a teen camper. He was just there because he lives close to the campgrounds, and they always yeah, his I family. Was just, I was just young, and I was there, and I <laughs> vaguely remember it. And I was watching it one day on. I found it on YouTube, and I like looked at it, and I was already working at youth ministries, and I like looked over, and I thought this dude looked just like Kyle, but he had hair. So for our listeners, Kyle doesn't I, have hair. I used to have hair. And <laughs> he used to it was have pretty hair. nice, but you know. um, yeah, he he looked very different but i asked him about it one day and it was uh it was a good laugh but yeah we both grew up on uh the illinois district campgrounds and you know there are probably a lot of stories that we could tell some of them might be incriminating to (laughs) both of us but um we'll have to get that video out there because it's it's hilarious and uh the is is just gold yeah the one that i have is terrible quality so it might not be any good but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but at least you'll be able to hear what's going on. Yeah, there's a nice whistle solo in there. Yes. But no, but yeah, like I said, this is just kind of a meet the meet the host episode. Um, both grew up in Illinois on the campground. I know some of my greatest memories were on the Illinois campground, um, whether it be riding golf carts or playing basketball. My sport was softball, so I would always look forward to playing softball. Unfortunately, no. The Illinois sport has kind of changed to basketball a little bit, so really, that's depressing. I did not know that. Yeah, I remember they did a basketball tournament whenever I was there, but I never played because I am terrible at basketball. But yeah, I did play I softball, do. and I always loved that. I always looked forward yeah. to that. So often the softball tournament every year was not the highlight because the services were the highlight, but the softball tournaments were one of the best parts of camp. Yeah. Other than the camp food, <laughs> camp food was obviously amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah, I uh, I just visited. So my girlfriend's from Tennessee, and over the weekend we went to uh, the Tennessee District Campground to, uh, she's a photographer, so she took some pictures for the uh, the Tennessee Youth Committee, and she was just, you know, taking me and driving around the Tennessee Campground and telling me all these stories about, you know, videos they did on the campground and, you know, stuff that happened. She was pointing out, like, where in the altar, in the sanctuary, like, all of her, where she got the Holy Ghost and all of her friends got the Holy Ghost, and... You know, it, it kind of made me realize that even though it's not Illinois, like the same type of stuff happens at the campground. So, yeah, that's one thing whenever you were mentioning when we were talking before we started the show, just stories about camp and stuff like it seems like a lifetime ago since I was at camp. I think my last year was probably 2006, maybe was my last year at camp. So uh, shows my age a little bit. <laughs> and then. Uh, but the stories that I do remember, the things I do remember most are, you know, the moves of God and the services and, and God calling me in, in the altar, you know, to, to ministry and to, to work for the kingdom of God. And I think that all of our listeners who have had the experience of going to district camps growing up, they, they have similar stories. And I just want to just throw a random shout in there to just don't, don't forget about those things. You might not have seen those come true, but don't forget about those callings because God's God still wants to use you. Yeah, yeah. I can personally say that my calling, you know, came to fruition at the Illinois campground. Um, my passion for youth ministry started. I know my my uncle was our youth president for a little bit, and uh, just watching him work, watching his passion for it, it it helped ignite my passion for youth ministry. So. That's really awesome, um, and especially this year, or I guess last year, you know, we a lot of people weren't able to have camp. I think I only know a few districts that were actually able to have camp, so camp is something that I'm personally missing. I'm looking forward to this year. I'm going to make the trip back to the the Illinois campgrounds to hopefully ride some golf carts, go to some services, and be a counselor. I th- the thing I love most probably about camp is being a counselor. That's so much fun. Yeah. I didn't realize how much fun it would be. Um, but and, and you know Jerry Caesar. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Anybody who knows Jerry Caesar, no, he's he is iconic. His <laughs> super deep voice. Yes. Um, we in our tabernacle, we like set up a worker dorms. It was just basically a curtain and some two by fours mm-hmm. in the back corner of the tabernacle, and those were the the boys' worker dorms. And uh, Jerry Caesar would always be the camp counselor in there, and uh, you know I'm sure he wasn't oblivious, but he you know, kind of just played along with it. But every single night, you know, we would always, you know, say that we needed to go get ice from the cafeteria for our coolers. So we would all, (laughs) 
we would always bring our cooler to the cafeteria and we would sneak back into the kitchen, go in the giant freezer <laughs> and we would take probably like a crate of chocolate milk every <laughs> night. <laughs> and he like, he knew what was going on. He would always uh, say before we left, he was like, bring me back some chocolate milk. <laughs> it's super <laughs> deep voice. Um, I could hear it now. Yeah, he's, he's great. I don't, I don't I wonder where he's at right now. If you're listening, brother, Jerry Caesar. Jerry Caesar. We appreciate you and we love you. Yeah. Yeah, we at camp, he was like a staple of camp. Everyone would always yeah. shout his name like a certain TV show that won't be mentioned, but Yeah, he always had a I remember he always had a bowl of candy. Um, always. And he would have it there we can help ourselves or whatever. Well, there one of our the campers would always take it the whole bowl and hide it or whatever just to get him all riled up and he'd come in there and be like Matthew where's my candy yeah we uh I don't know why that just reminded me but did you ever play like any youth group game I'm not I'm sure what size your youth group your youth group was but did you ever play like any weird games uh growing up like on youth trips or anything I'm sure we did we played uh, upset the fruit basket and um uh, different things like that i don't remember there was one that somebody mentioned the name to me the other day and said we needed to do it in our hyphen class uh on wednesday nights but i cannot remember i didn't know that it had a name but it's where you all sitting in a circle and then there are people standing around you in a circle behind each person sitting down and uh the people standing behind the person seated could only look down at their shoulders and Everybody in the sitting down in the circle were looking around, and somebody was designated oh. to to wink at that person to uh, wink at somebody. And if I you get winked I, at, you've got to switch seats I before think it's called the a person. Wink okay, wink them. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's a random game, and it just came up the other day. So. Yeah, we. Uh, I remember one youth trip that I. I'm from Bloomington, Illinois. Our youth. Shout out to an APC Fusion. Uh, oh, we just changed your name. Lord forgive me. To Catalyst. And, uh, and the hyphen group, shout out to y'all. Um, but we were on a youth trip once to Maranatha, Illinois. Mm-hmm. And this place is out in the middle of nowhere. It's like this Christian campground, like right outside Herrick, Illinois. Mm-hmm. And uh, like no internet service, it's just like a row of cabins. And then behind it, there's like a bunch of woods. And then you go on the other side of the woods and there's like this giant metal slide that you like slide down potato sacks. It's the creepiest okay, place. Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the setting for a horror film. Um, but we were uh, we were playing a game there, and my buddy Kel he uh, he set up this game. It, it's I think based off the game like Plinko, um, where you like do the pe- the pegs on a board and you like put a, a disc mm-hmm. thing in there yeah. and it like falls down. And wherever it lands, there's, like, a different drink. He put, like, the weirdest stuff on there. Like, one of it was, or like, eggs. Uh, one of it was pickled pig's feet. Uh, raw eggs, by the way. Um, yeah. And, like, ketchup, mustard, mayo, uh, prune juice, vinegar. Like, all these weird things. And you had to, um, you had to slide the disc down twice. And whatever two options, two or three options that you got, you had to drink. And you had to keep it down. Um so I did that. I went up against my my uh, other buddy Nate, and somehow we ended up getting the same thing, <laughs> except for it was mine was mustard, a raw egg, um, and I want to say vinegar or or pickles or something like that. And he got like the same thing, but instead of mustard, he got mayo, oh. <laughs> and it was the most disgusting thing. We're like both s- sitting over <laughs> a garbage can, and uh, that's gross. You know, they they count down. <laughs> We count down, and we both just down these things. Um, and, like, I tried to swallow it, but the texture of the egg was absolutely horrible. So, <laughs> like, without even realizing it, the <laughs> just the egg yolk <laughs> shoots out of my mouth yeah. and lands right on my sister's lap. <laughs> and there's a video of it somewhere, but she just, like, gets up and she starts running. And then Nate, <laughs> Nate swallows it and swallows his cup. And he is, like, good for a second. <laughs> and then all of a sudden just instantly throws up into the trash can right under him. Oh. And the video is hilarious. But, uh. like, just stuff like that is 
like the highlights of youth trips and stuff, and they're the best games to play. That's so funny. Yeah, that's one thing interesting about the egg yolks is if you don't break the yolk, you can't. Oh, like your your esophagus or something can't get it down, so it just automatically comes back <laughs> it up. Shoots up. Oh, violently. I've seen it happen. That's it's gross. Horrible. <laughs> uh, we did play a game at camp once where it was kind of like hot potato, but with a raw onion. Oh. And if the music stopped, you had to take a bite out of the onion. Oh. It was on one of the evening games that we played in the tabernacle. So that was gross. That's and I hate onions because of that. Oh, I mean, I hate onions in general, but that's disgusting. <laughs> um, no, what's, what's some other games we played at camp? I don't think you were there whenever we played it. I think they started it, and they only did it for like two years because too many people were getting hurt. I know I busted my face. Mm. But we did ice block sledding down uh, – down that field or down the hill um, by the softball field yeah by the softball field next to the barn okay um so they like froze blocks of ice in like giant tubs plastic tubs <laughs> for like the entire week of camp and they put a rope in it so you had something to hold on to but like the the biggest thing that we would do during like recreation time would be to slide down the hill on those blocks of ice and uh so many people got hurt like i somehow it hit a bump and I started like flipping and, and it, <laughs> I think the thing like actually the block like landed on my face oh, no. and it like cut my chin open and I almost had to go get stitches and there's some and we did uh one year we had like a giant water slide and that's what we've been doing for the past few years we had a giant water slide on a tarp and uh into a giant mud pit and <laughs> I think we had to stop doing that because a kid in my youth group like stepped in the water and actually stepped on some glass. So, yeah, camp games are they're they're not for the faint of heart. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. So I grew up in uh, more southern Illinois in Mount Vernon area. I actually lived in Woodlawn, uh, but I went to church in Mount Vernon at Calvary. Uh, and so that's where I grew up. The youth group is Rev- Revolution Youth Group. That's the name of the youth group. So. Whoop, whoop. Shout out to you guys if you, any of you are listening. Uh, I haven't been out there in far too long, uh, so I need to get out there and visit the home church. Um, but, yeah, so I grew up in a really small town, uh, and then I came out here for school uh, to go to uh, Urshan College. It was Gateway at the time, and then uh, never left. You know, I, I, have, I met my wife here. We got married after she graduated. And we have two kids now, so that's crazy. Um, but it's a lot of fun, and yeah, it's been a it's been a blast. So, uh, you grew up in Bloomington, right? Yeah, in Bloomington, uh, Bloomington Normal. It's kind of like a sister city, I think. Yeah. Overall, they have like 140,000. So, it's not really a small town by any means, but it kind of feels like it a little bit. Um, but no, it was a it's a great hometown. I love my church, my home church. I love my youth group. Uh, my dad is actually my pastor, um, and I've pretty much grown up a PK my entire life. Uh, I was born in Bloomington, and then I actually came and lived here for five years um, in Florissant, about a mile away from the uh, old Urshan campus, old Gateway campus on 700 Howdershell Road. Um, and then five years later, we moved back to Bloomington. My dad uh, took over as pastor of APC, and uh, you know I've been there ever since, and I came to back to St. Louis to go to Urshan in, I want to say, fall of 2018, um, and been here ever since. I, along with youth ministries, I actually work on the coffee shop, uh, work at the coffee shop on campus, which is a huge blessing. If you're a college mm-hmm. student, you know how much coffee is a necessity. Coffee. So many late nights <laughs> drinking coffee, doing papers and stuff, but, um, no, we are actually on the Urshan campus right now. Uh, this is kind of where we decided to set up. Uh, it's we recorded this episode today. I think it's going to be released later tonight. But um, if you're anywhere in the eastern United States, you know how much snow we've been getting, yeah. and it is frigid cold, and the roads are horrible. So headquarters yeah. has been <laughs> shut down for the past couple days. Yeah. So uh, we needed to get, get this episode going. Um, but yeah, so this this wall is actually the UGST Chapel wall. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some Urshan stories that I've had, but yeah. fortunately, some of them may be incriminating to myself. Well, but 
Yeah, we don't want to encourage any incriminating activity. I guess I can say <laughs> this. We, there is something that happened the last couple of weeks that Kyle, me and Kyle have kind of been involved in. Um, so somehow I accidentally stole. <laughs> <laughs> somehow I accidentally stole Brother Graham, Scott Graham's chair, his <laughs> office chair. Um, I didn't know it was his. I thought it was not being used, but we were working in the UPCI warehouse one day and, uh, yeah, you know, like, I just saw, yeah, I just saw a chair there and yeah. there was just a j- bunch of chairs that were sitting in a pile that looked like they were, had not been used in who knows how long and they're not in the best condition. Uh, and so we just thought they were, yeah. they were going to get rid of them or what, but I, I don't know what. Yeah. And so, so yeah. I, I saw the chair and I thought, okay, well, nobody's, it's here. Nobody wants it. Nobody's going to use it. So I took it and back to my dorm room and it's, uh, it's been sitting in, in my dorm room for probably the past two months or so. Yeah. And then I got a phone call a few <laughs> days ago asking if anybody from youth ministries took a chair out of the warehouse. And I, I totally <laughs> forgot about it cause we were working on other stuff for the office and it was just kind of like totally forgot that conversation even happened. And then the next time we were out at the warehouse, one of the guys was like, Hey, did you guys <laughs> see a chair anywhere? And we were like, Oh Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, uh, I, I told him I had the chair. No, I, I didn't lie. I told him I had the chair. He said, "Okay, can you can you bring it back? I won't tell anybody if you just you know bring it back." So I was like, "Okay, that's fair." And I didn't, but I didn't want anybody to be there. I didn't want anybody to know I took the chair. But obviously, I'm outing myself right now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the UPCI warehouse is on the Urshan campus now. So we, uh, me and my roommate, my buddy Austin Bailey, best friends for over 15 years now. Shout out to him. Um, so we took the chair. We like, dressed up in all black because I didn't know if there were any cameras there. <laughs> um, and uh, so we get the chair. We put it in his car, and we're taking it back to uh, to the warehouse. And I open the door, and I like I'm walking in to put the chair back where I found it. And you know, no harm done. And all of a sudden, an alarm starts going off. <laughs> Um, so I just stand there and all of a sudden I just push the chair and then I just book it out of there. <laughs> um, so, um, hopefully brother Graham got his chair back. If you ever listen to this, I am truly sorry. I hope it's comfortable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we know Braden enjoyed it. While I, 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 I so. did enjoy it. I did a couple of papers in there, so <laughs> I promise you I put it to good use. Um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, um, so we, we can probably wrap up this episode for right now, but, uh, you know, we thank you for joining us again. This is kind of different than what we've been doing. We've kind of been doing interview style um, for our, our podcast episodes so far. But what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to make it a little bit more informal, um, a little bit more uh, uh, fun. Um, that way our listeners want to listen to it. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Up, up until now, we've had some pretty good content, you know, if, uh, you haven't listened to them already, go back, listen to the rankings episodes and uh, with Reagan Matheson and Paul Marion. You know, there's some great episodes. I feel like I'm missing yeah. one. Uh, Kyle Thayer. We did Kyle one with Thayer, Kyle Thayer right. on technology. So I'll say, I think that's it. Yeah. I don't think I'm missing anybody. But yeah. Well, but next episode, tune in. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to go more into detail about uh, just the vision. We're going to set the vision for the, for the podcast moving forward. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, so we're definitely going to still have guests on the podcast. It's not just going to be us talking to each other all the time because that would probably get really boring. Yeah. (laughs) At least nobody, I don't have much interesting to say, Uh, (laughs) but it is what it is, but I'm glad to be here. I'm excited about, about this podcast. I'm excited about what, what we're doing uh, for youth ministries. It's definitely a blessing to be able to work for youth ministries. And uh, it's very unique whenever I was a kid you didn't you just don't think about what's going on yeah behind the scenes and so that's been a lot of a lot of fun that's a lot of fun for me every day just being able to see how it works yeah um i I don't know if you mentioned it but i think adam shaw is going to be the one joining us next week right yeah or next month yeah he's actually uh he's our new podcast podcast coordinator coordinator. i don't know if he's i don't know if that's an official title or not yeah but. but that is that is so he's kind of overseeing this this podcast uh branch of the youth ministries podcast line so yeah anyway there we go uh yeah it's gonna be fun um please join in tune in next time next month the third tuesday of each month is when this podcast goes live but 
Uh, we thank you all for joining in and tuning in, listening, and or watching. If you're watching this on YouTube or this might be on Facebook, I don't yeah. know. Who knows? But if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and throw your favorite camp story in the comments. Camp story, below. youth group story, favorite game. You know, we want to hear what you guys have to say. So, um, thanks again for joining us. Uh, once again, this is Braden Ave and Kyle Lloyd from the Youth Room. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and follow UPCI Youth Ministries on social media. We'll catch you next time in the youth room.